Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. Maxwell House is always good to the last... <laughs> drop. Mmm, that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and our happy postman. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee-drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. The coffee that gives you so much more for so little more that it's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in the world. Yes, Maxwell House. Expertly blended and radiant roasted for rich, mellow, extra flavor. Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. Well, George Burns is one of those lucky men whose wife looks after him. In fact, if it hadn't been for Gracie, George would never have gotten away for that rest in the pines. It all started last week when Gracie said... George. Yes, dear? Our radio program goes back on the air next week, and I think you ought to get away for a little rest before you start to work. Oh, but I don't need a rest, Gracie. I feel wonderful. Oh, now, dear, I know how hard you work once the radio season starts. Standing up there in front of that microphone... Pouring into it all the charm and talent that is you. Do you really think my personality comes over the radio, Gracie? Oh, darling, radio was made for you. And when television comes... Yeah? Well, let's worry about that when it comes. In the meantime, we'll save our money. Now, you go away for a rest. I'll hold it, of course. Now, I I've made, uh, I've made a reservation for you at Pine Lake in the Pines. A week of fishing will put you in shape for the season. But, Gracie, I feel absolutely wonderful. Why should I go fishing? Well, darling, all men go fishing in the summer, from the president on down. I heard a radio commentator discussing it this morning. He said, President Truman's out on a yacht, most of the congressmen are at some lake, and the rest of the country's up the creek. <laughs> He's got something there. Yeah, now, dear, go pack your gun and your fishing rod and head for Pine Lake in the Pines. How about you? Oh, you don't want a woman tagging along to, to a place like that. That's for uh, big, strong he-men like you. Oh, I can see you now blazing away at a mountain trout or reeling in a covey of quail. <laughs> or harpooning a deer. Sure. Yeah, a professional harpooner. Look, but uh, won't you be terribly lonesome if I go away for a week? Well, of course I will, George. I'll miss you so much I won't be able to stand it in this house without you. You poor kid. Where will you go? Oh, who knows where I might wander in my loneliness. Magnum, Sachs, Bullocks, the May Company. <laughs> oh, ho, so that's why you'd like to get me out of town. So you can go on a shopping spree. Well, I do shop much better when you're out of town. Gracie, I'm not going to Pine Lake while you spend all my money on new clothes. Besides, I don't need a rest. I'm in the pink. But think what a week up there will do for you. When you come back, you'll be in the red. <laughs> yes, I'll even be healthier. Well, I'll tell you what, dear. If you go to Pine Lake in the Pines, I'll promise to only window shop while you're gone. Only window shop? Yes. Huh? I'll buy only what I see in the windows. <laughs> yes, that's better that way. You know, I made a reservation for you, and I've got all your clothes packed. Well, I guess I might as well. You'll go shopping either way. Oh, you'll feel wonderful when you come back with your lungs full of that sweet-scented pine air. It's a shame you have to miss it. Oh, well, that's all right. When you come back, you can breathe on me. <laughs> I'll do that. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, dear. And so George went away for a week of solid rest at Pine Lake in the Pines. We find him now just returning home. And how do you think he feels? Just the way you felt when you got home from your vacation. George! 
Judge, my big, strong He-Man is back. Oh, help me in the door, Gracie. <laughs> Darling, what's the matter? I haven't slept for a week. Some wise guy got my reservation. I had to sleep on the ground. Oh, you poor boy. Sit down and tell me all about it. I'm covered with mosquito bites. But I'm so sunburned, I can't scratch them. Oh, darling. <laughs> Sit down and tell me all about it. Not only that, I got poison ivy. Oh, where? Right here. Oh, kneel down and tell me all about it. <laughs> I feel awful. What a week. But wasn't it wonderful smelling the pine air? I don't know. I couldn't smell it. Why not? My nose closed up. <laughs> I'm allergic to pine trees. Oh, you poor darling. I sneezed the whole time I was there. Oh, what a shame. But I'll cure your allergy. I'll have you on your feet in no time. Thanks. Now, let's see. What is that remedy I heard about? You soak your feet in a gallon of Epsom salts and drink a hot lemonade. Or... Do you soak your feet in the hot lemonade <laughs> and drink a gallon of Epsom salt? <laughs> George, which do you think would get you on your feet quicker? <laughs> I think somebody else better kill me. No, excuse me, me dear. I'll see who's at the door. Good afternoon, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Oh, thank you, Mr. Postman. You've been away on a vacation, haven't you? Yes. I spent two weeks at the beach letting the sun turn my superb body into a bronze thing of splendor. <laughs> Now I'm simply bursting with energy. Well, you're certainly luckier than my husband. At least you didn't come home with a frightful affliction. Oh, yes, I did. My wife was with me. <laughs> oh, no, no. I didn't mean your wife. I meant something like an allergy. Poor George just got back from the pine woods with a terrible allergy. Oh, it's too bad he didn't go swimming with me. It would have given him new vigor. Oh, yeah, he could use it. Does your husband do the backstroke? Well, he did when we were first married. Now I'm lucky if he holds my hand. <laughs> oh. You say some whimsical things, Mrs. Burns. <sighs> well, <laughs> I'm sorry George didn't go with you, Mr. Postman. It certainly turned you into a tower of strength. Oh, you're so right. Single-handed, I fought four brawny lifeguards, ripping, tearing, slugging, crunching, scratching. They were after my wife. Oh, did you beat them? No, they overpowered me and rescued her anyway. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Good old school days. Meredith. Yes, They Bill. say this is going to be the biggest school year in history. Entirely right. Already the kids are hitting the concrete and cobblestone schoolyards from Boston to San Francisco. Yep, to say nothing of the big school buses rolling through the farmlands. And this year especially, the XGIs are pouring onto 100 campuses. A slide rule in one hand and, mighty often, a bundle of three-cornered pants in the other. Sure enough, the yearly trek back to school is more than ever a real and vital part of the American scene. And you know, in its own way, Maxwell House coffee is a very real part of the American scene, too. Coffee, well, coffee, after all, is America's favorite drink. And Maxwell House is America's favorite coffee, bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand. North, east, south, and west, it's Maxwell House wherever you go. It's flavor that tells this popularity story, of course. The mellow, full-bodied Maxwell House flavor that results from the skillful blending of these premium Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other fine coffees for vigor. 
and Bucaramanga's for full body. Adding up to great coffee at its flavor peak. Listen, friends, why not enjoy the very best in coffee drinking pleasure? You can, and at a fraction of a cent more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. Next time, ask for Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Oh, George, I'm terribly sorry about your vacation. Imagine going to the pine woods and finding out you're allergic to pine trees. Yeah. Never had such a miserable... <laughs> oh, George, you sneezed. And there are no pine trees around here. That's funny. I thought it was the smell of pine that... <laughs> well, there's only one explanation. It's not pine trees you're allergic to. It's something else. Something you had with you up there and still have with you. Look in your pocket. Well, all I've got in my pocket is some money. See, there's a five and some... And some... Mm -hmm. oh, that's it. You're allergic to money. <laughs> huh? Here, give it to me. Now, just a minute. Now, just... Uh, uh, Hurry, dear, hurry before you blow it away. Well, see, I can't be allergic to money. I love it too much. Well, allergies are strange things. Hand the money to me, dear. Well, I guess it's worth trying. Here. That's it. How about your billfold? Any in there? Yes, and that's where it's going to stay. <laughs> After all, I'm not a... I'm not a... Uh... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Billfold. Okay. Here. Thank you, dear. My goodness, I wish you had developed this allergy when we were first married. <laughs> what a wardrobe I'd have. Now, you're not going to spend the money on something silly like hats. Oh, of course not, George. I'll use this to buy something permanent. Like what? Like a permanent. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, besides, what do you care? Isn't it wonderful not to be sneezing anymore? I'll have to admit, I haven't sneezed since I gave you the money. Hey, you must never touch the awful stuff again. <laughs> Lucky you have me to protect you from it. Well, as long as I'm allergic to it, I guess from now on you'll handle all the money in the... <laughs> you <old> quick, <laughs> George, hold your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Gracie. Oh, you know they say sometimes it takes a whole month to get over an allergy. So I better keep the money a month, huh? A week? Until tomorrow? <laughs> Five minutes? You want it right now? Right huh? now, right now. Oh, uh, here. Thanks. Now you, now you can forget the permanent wave. Oh, I'll bet I'm the first woman who ever had her hair sneeze straight. <laughs> I knew it looks pretty good I'll answer the door And then I'm going to the market to shop for dinner, dear You try and relax Okay Hello, Gracie Is uh, George back from his vacation yet? Oh, yes, Meredith I wish you could keep him company while I run to the market He feels terribly low Oh, well, I'll cheer him up, Gracie Ah, oh, you're sweet, Meredith Goodbye Bye. Oh, uh, before I go, Meredith I just want to say I thought you were wonderful on the summer show Well, now that's a coincidence So did I <laughs> oh. oh, goodbye, Meredith Goodbye Ah, uh, there's a sweet girl Well, now to cheer up poor old George Ah, there you are Hello, Meredith I, uh, I have come to dispel your melancholy mood with good fellowship and friendly chit-chat. <laughs> Later, Meredith, I don't feel good. I've got an allergy and I'm... An allergy, eh? Hey? I recall a similar case in my hometown of Mason City, Iowa. Later, Meredith, Old I'm not... Frank Gallagher had the darndest allergy, sneezed from morning to night. That's too bad. See you later, huh, It Meredith? got so bad that he couldn't hold a steady job. Just picked up a little money standing in front of windmills when there wasn't a breeze. Uh, a little later, Meredith I don't feel Worst well. of all, George The doctors couldn't tell what he was allergic to They kept testing him until he had more than 500 scratches on his body A little later, Meredith But it had its brighter side Old Frank was a devoted son And he persuaded the doctors to arrange those scratches So that they spelled mother 
In about two or three months. Maybe. Well, sir, every test failed, but one smart doctor finally figured it out. Old Frank was allergic to himself. No. Yes. Old Frank thought it over, and he says, well, if I'm allergic to Frank Gallagher, I'll change my name. So he changed it to Joseph W. Henneberry. And that cured Gallagher? Yep. But now uh, Henneberry sneezes from morning to night. <laughs> is, uh, is that the end of your little story, Meredith? Yes. Except that I'd like to add a word of warning. In treating this allergy, beware the excessive use of drugs. Remember, a little dope goes a long way. You can't go too far for me, Meredith. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Sit down, George. Dinner's on the table. Oh, boy, am I hungry. I'm sure glad an allergy doesn't keep you from eating. Oh, and I've prepared a wonderful dinner. Steak. Mmm. Your favorite vegetable. Wow. And fresh fruit. Oh, boy. Boy, let's get started. All right, here's your steak. What a beauty. Look at the way my knife slides through it. Mm hmm <laughs> Boy, there's nothing like a tender, juicy steak. George, you sneezed. I did? Yeah. Oh, what a shame. You're allergic to meat. <laughs> Gracie. Slide it over on my plate, dear. <laughs> but, Gracie, I can't live without oh, meat. Oh, of course you can. Look at George Bernard Shaw. He's a vegetarian, and he claims he'll live to be 300 years old. But I'm not interested oh, in... Oh, well, think how wonderful it would be if you lived 300 years. Why, you might even live long enough to get that new car we ordered. <laughs> Gracie, Shaw can live 300 years if he wants to. I'll settle for 150 and a piece of meat. Oh, remember your allergy, dear. Here, have some vegetables. Well, I guess I'll fill up on the veg. Yeah. On the veg. I knew. Oh, well, now you see, that leaves only the fruit. Well, don't worry. They say monkeys live on fruit. Here, have some. Thanks. I'm so hungry, I'll think I'll eat these bananas and skins and... Oh. Mm. 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 <laughs> Hand me the fruit, dear. But I've got to have something. Well, don't get panicky. You can't have meat, vegetables, or fruit, but you can eat anything else. Yeah, like rocks and an old umbrella. <laughs> I tell you, Gracie, I... <laughs> oh, George, if we, if we don't cure this allergy, you won't be able to do our radio broadcast. Yeah. I might sneeze right in the middle of one of my songs. I better see it. <clears throat> The April showers may come your way. Oh, ah. dear. They bring flowers. Oh, that, that would be terrible, sugar throat. Say, I'll tell you what we ought to do, Gracie. Hire Frank Sinatra to stand by. Well, how would that work? Well, Frank would be on one side of the mic, and I'd be on the other. And I'd go into my song, and if I sneezed, he'd pick it up. Uh-huh. If you sneezed, who'd pick him up? <laughs> I hadn't thought of it. They say it's wonderful. Meredith Wilson and his chiffon music.
just sneezing because you're allergic to some cloth you're wearing. What's your coat made of? Wool. That's it. Lots of people are allergic to wool. Take it off, dear. Okay, if you think it'll help. Of course it will. There, that's it. <laughs> well, it's not wool. What's your shirt made of? Linen. All right, we'll try that. Take it off, dear. <laughs> okay, here's the shirt. But I'm warning you. If this idea doesn't work, it's to la... It's to... <laughs> what are your pants made of? Flannel and the staying on. <laughs> George, we've got to cure your allergy. Take those pants off. I won't do it. Well, there's no one here but me, and I never laugh at your knees anymore. <laughs> Gracie, I'm not going to... Any joke becomes dull after 12 years. <laughs> Look, I'm not taking off my pants and all. <laughs> now, you see, it's the flannel. Please, George. Oh, all right. Here's the pants. George? Yeah? Are your shorts made of flannel, too? <laughs> no, they're made of cotton. My, what a lot we owe to the South. <laughs> Okay, so I'm allergic to flannel. But I can't stand around the rest of the day standing here in my shorts. Well, hi, Gracie. Hello, Bill. Gee, it's good to see you. And George. Ah! <laughs> I might have known you'd show up at a time like this, comedian. Well, I've heard of the body beautiful, but this is the form fantastic. <laughs> oh, Bill. How can you say that about George's adorable figure? Well, I think he makes September morn look silly. I don't know about September morn, but he certainly louses up a September afternoon. <laughs> look, funny man, if I want to stand around without my clothes on, it's my own business. Well, you better liquidate, buddy. Business is in terrible shape. <laughs> Bill, let me explain. You see, I'm... I'm... Mm, <coughs> Well, you're a little old for this strip stuff, Gypsy Rose. Better put your clothes back on. Oh, Bill, that's not why he's sneezing. He's caught a dreadful allergy. He's been sneezing like this all day. <laughs> Is that Bill, we've got to do something. I'm afraid George will sneeze his brains out. Oh, okay, Gracie. Will you get me a little capsule? Capsule? Mm -hmm. Want to give me some medicine, Bill? No, in case you sneeze your brains out, that's to put them in. <laughs> You're being a big help, comedian. Uh, <laughs> Gracie, you better go call a doctor. All right, darling. I'll go get a doctor over here right away. Dr. Schmachter. George, I can cure you sneezing in one minute. Really, Bill? How? Well, I'll show you. Now, look me right in the eye and listen very carefully. Okay, I'm listening. Maxwell House Coffee is coffee at its very best. <laughs> Yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. That's a value too good to miss. No wonder more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand. They know they can depend on that mellow, full-bodied Maxwell House flavor, the result of skillful blending and radiant roasting. And with all this extra flavor, Maxwell House costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. So insist on Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. There, you see, George, you didn't sneeze once while I was talking. Well, I'll be done. How did you know I wouldn't? Well, it's simple. The things I say about Maxwell House coffee just can't be sneezed at. <laughs> He's right in here, Doctor. I hope you can do something for him. Well, don't worry, madam. Whatever is wrong with your husband, I'm sure I can help him. Oh, well, here he is. Hello, Doc. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, where did the accident occur? I wasn't in any accident. Oh, no, no, Doctor. He just has an allergy. He sneezes all the time. Oh, oh, I see. Well, many times these allergies are aggravated by the presence of pollen, and I'm afraid there's some here. There is? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, to cure your husband, we may have to remove the petunia. Oh, dear. Will it leave much of a scar? <laughs> Mrs. Burns, the petunia I was referring to was in the pot. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, there his 
shirtle covered. Uh, yes. <laughs> of course, I'm not certain this is an allergy yet. I'll have to examine him. Uh, say ah. Ah. Hmm. Mrs. Burns, would you go boil some water, please? Well, of course that... Boil some water? Well, that's what they always say when someone's gonna have a baby. Stop thinking Gracie, not gonna go have boil a... some water. Yes, dear, right away. Well, Doc, now that my wife is out of the room, tell me the worst. Are you gonna operate? Certainly not. The boiling water's for lemonade. You haven't got an allergy. Then why do I keep sneezing? You've got a cold. Oh, sure. Here, take these tablets and a glass of hot lemonade every hour. Uh, that'll be $25. 25 bucks? Well, I realize that's a little stiff, but I need the money. My wife went on a shopping spree last week. So did mine. That whole closet is full of clothes from the May Company. Huh, it's murder. Murder. Wait a minute, Doc. I've got an idea. My wife still thinks I'm allergic to something, but she doesn't know what. If she thought it was the new clothes, she'd send them back and save me a fortune. Mr. Burns, I couldn't be a party to such trickery. Medical ethics, you know. But, Doc... Absolutely not. Let's not discuss it. If it works, you can use it on your wife. Let's not discuss it. Let's do it. <laughs> Attaboy, Doc. Now, when she... <clears throat> well, the water will be boiling in a minute. Did you find out what he's allergic to, Doctor? Uh, we're getting warm, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> Whenever he gets close to that closet, he seems to sneeze. Oh, but there's nothing in there except my new clothes from the May Company. See, I, I'll open it and show you. It's it! It's it! It's it! Close the door! It's it! <laughs> well, there's your answer, Mrs. Burns. You mean as long as I keep those clothes, my husband will keep on sneezing? I'm afraid so. Oh, well, there's only one thing to do. Hand me that phone. Uh... Who, uh, who are you dialing, Gracie? May Company. I had a girl. Yeah, hello, May Company? This is Mrs. George Burns, 360 North Camden. Yes. Please send over two cases of Kleenex. Oh, no. <laughs> Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Well, Gracie, I'm glad my allergy turned out to be just a cold. But don't come close to me at night. You might catch it. Oh, darling, you mean I'll have to stay away from you until your cold is cured? I'm afraid so. Oh, how awful. It'll be bad enough during the day, but when evening comes and romance calls... Yeah? Well, who'll take me to see that Charles Boyer picture? Good night. <laughs> it can't be the same if it ain't got that name. Get bird's eye, bird's eye frosted food. This week's big bird's eye feature is bird's eye spinach, tender emerald green spinach, the finest America grows, quick frozen to seal in its tempting fresh picked flavor, and already clean for you, washed free of every speck of sand or grit. Your bird's eye store has plenty of it now, so get a box tomorrow. But be sure you get bird's eye spinach. Remember, get bird's eye and you get the best. Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson, and his orchestra, yours truly, Bill Goodwin. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. And now stay tuned in for the Kraft Music Hall, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Good night. <laughs> this is NBC, the national broadcasting company.